Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Madden cheese as always. Got another tips video for you today. Today I'm going to be going over uh, tips on how to run the ball in Madden 21. In today's video, I'm going to go over everything from what you can do pre-snap all the way through to the end of the play, uh, including, you know, some really exotic ways to uh, break ankles and dumb out defenders uh, with some juke moves and stuff like that. So we're going to go over all that in today's video. But before I do, if you guys want to do me a favor, scroll down a little bit, hit the like button, like, shares, comments, all that stuff really helps this channel out. I'm doing my best to help you out, so hook me up back. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button to stick around and catch more of my content. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing you want to do uh, before you, you know, come out of formation is you want to make sure that you set up your audible plays uh, with pretty much any formation that you're running from. Uh, you typically want to have a good variation of inside runs and outside runs because if you see an advantage, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but if you see an advantage on somewhere that you can run, it's going to do you no good if you don't have your audible play set up and you don't have a play that you can basically switch over to. So that's your first step. Always set up audible plays, have a good selection of runs inside and out on this first series. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And now we, you can see that I basically have a couple of different options when it comes to launch angles. So if it's an outside run, I have a stretch. I can flip the stretch with uh, the right stick so it's really like having four or even five runs based off the fact that i can make adjustments to the run after the fact uh in this particular scenario i thought the best way to go was up the middle uh, but there's going to be certain tells when it comes to uh, defenses what type of defenses you can run against your next step would be reading the defense just like if you were going to pass the ball reading the defense is going to give you a huge advantage so on this next play here the formation that i'm using quite a bit uh, it has two receivers to the left side no receivers to the right side so it's going to give away any man coverage looks which is exactly what we're looking at here so anytime you have a man coverage look it's an automatic advantage based off the fact that there's no uh cornerbacks on the right side that's going to be where you want to run the ball you can get this look from a lot of different formations where there's multiple receivers on one side and none of the other side basically that's going to give you an advantage every single time and then you're going to see you're basically running here where there's nobody outside to stop you so that's an obvious way to beat man coverages but there's weaknesses and strengths to every defense this next play is a similar look it's a cover three it could a lot of people can confuse it with the cover one based off of the single high safety but based off the fact that there is a cornerback on the right side we know we have a cover three uh, cover threes have one one strength and one weakness the strength is that typically there's a safety in the box which makes it a better inside run defense so typically you want to run outside against cover threes and the reason for that is pretty easy this outside cornerback here typically in a cover three its first responsibility is to drop back the second that the play starts since it's doing that you can see that he's back about 10 yards deep which basically leaves the edge very vulnerable so against cover threes and cover fours you have that look where the cornerbacks dropping back now when you have a cover two look like we have here it once again has one strength one weakness the strength is against stretch plays the cornerbacks play down they're only about five yards off the line they don't drop back because deep coverage is not necessarily their responsibility the same way that cover three cornerbacks and cover four cornerbacks are so ultimately this is a play where you're going to be better running it inside because number one the cornerbacks will cut you off outside and number two there's no safety in the box so you're basically a lot weaker on the inside looking at two deep safeties so always make sure you're reading the defense, and the easiest way to remember it is run inside against cover twos, run outside against cover threes and fours. The next step is what to look for once the play starts. Once the play starts, you're constantly making snap decisions uh, based off of what you're looking at. Basically, you're trying to read free defenders, and you're trying to read your blockers. So typically, you want to aim at your blockers' backs, but a lot of times, there'll be a forced defender kind of cutting you off, making you not do what you want to do. So here we have a quick look. I got a free defender right in my face, so he's dictating that I have to run to the left, to say the very least. Uh, once I do, I mean, I, I'm pretty much surrounded by red jerseys, but I I still have an opportunity here to make a play so i have to read do i have any blockers left i have one blocker ultimately you lead your blockers to the defenders so that they make the play so you have to run towards your blocker to make sure that they do their job and they give you the proper angle you can see right there almost house called that i just didn't have enough speed didn't quite have the the separation there was a lot of defenders around me but still very simple uh, to make those reads but like i said you're making them very quickly so on the next play here we have a stretch play this is a scenario where a lot of times people will want to stretch it wide but based off of the fact that that blocker is not engaged and that that defender has outside containment 
to that blocker. I have to cut it back inside because if I would have stretched it out, he would have stretched me out to the sideline and he would have tackled me. Here on the next play, we have what looks like an off coverage once again. I mean, the cornerbacks are very, playing very deep. The defender, the user defender backs up pre-snap as well. And then you can see here, I mean, my intention is to take it outside, but the second I do, the cornerback drops down. So I have to wait for my blocker to set up, go on the inside of him. If I would have went outside once again, he would have just basically got a free release, got off the ball, and he would have made a play. The next thing you got to know about is what can you do uh, once you're, uh, you know, basically in a situation that you're running the ball and you don't have any blockers. So basically to make players miss one on one, you have a variety of moves. This first one I'm going to show is kind of like a jump cut, but it's also like a juke. You almost have to use both sticks while doing it. Uh, if I were to just make a juke since I'm running in the left direction, he's going to continue to run in the left direction. So if I use both sticks and I basically do a juke with the right stick while changing direction to turn up the field with the left stick. So that's the right stick to the right and the left stick up and you're going to make a jump cut going up the field. This is something you can do. Jump cuts are something you can do in just about any scenario. So here in the very next play, uh, we're going to have a play where basically the, the design of the run is to go to the left. It's pretty much shut down. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make that exact same move. Only this time, I'm going to uh, do a juke to the right, and I'm going to hit my left directional stick to the right as well. And then you can see I'm basically running in space. So to me, jump cuts are one of the more important uh, moves when it comes to, um, you know, just basically changing direction. Jukes are probably uh, one of the best uh, moves to actually make somebody miss. As you can see right here, anytime a defender is leading you or over pursuing, a good juke or a jump cut juke like is what I'm going to do here. I'm not sure if that's the actual name, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, but basically, that's going to be one of the better ways um, to get inside and redirect yourself and get space. So here, I got a little bit of an animation. Sometimes you'll get a clean uh, break. Sometimes you'll get an animation like I got there uh, but ultimately jukes are very good now you can also do a double juke uh, which is basically if you have a full stamina bar um, you can basically you don't have to wait for um, the juking animation to stop before you can just juke right back the other way so this is something where you're basically just going to hit your right analog stick to the right or left and then before the animation finishes hit it to the right or left again in the direction that you want to go that's really that simple the, the juking animations are very easy to do the spin move animations are a little bit harder to do, but I feel like they're a little more overpowered. So here you can see, I mean, I, I did that spin a little bit late. Uh, I, I still got the animation. Sometimes you're going to get that. But ultimately, if you want to do a, a clean animation, uh, we just have to do a little bit early. Once again, you can see he's leading. That was not even one of the best animations, but that's basically one of the better ways to go. There are several ways to do uh, spin moves. Ultimately, all you have to do, though, is uh, pull back or down on the right stick. And then you're just going to uh, swipe it up in the direction that you want the uh, spin move to go. So here on the next play, like I said, I mean, this dumbs out a lot of defenders. You can see he's right in my face. Uh, but, you know, it basically, it's, the spin moves are a little bit more overpowered. Now, you don't have to finish the spin move animation. You can do almost what's like a double spin move, uh, where if you catch yourself about halfway through and you see that there's more space from one side to, than the other, uh, you can basically just, instead of moving your thumb all the way to the right side, just basically go back to the left side, and the runner will stop and go back in that direction, usually with a little bit of a speed boost, as you can see right there. So last tip, uh, using all these uh, functions are going to make your running back get tired. A few handy cheats to get stamina back for your running back. You can basically cycle through the plays. Uh, if you cycle through it enough, typically the color of the running back, you can see right here, it's a bright red. He's very tired. Uh, will typically go down a shade, meaning he's a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, energized. So right there you can see, I just basically flip through the plays in a formation long enough. Eventually they will basically get back some of their stamina. For what reason, I don't really know. A few handy cheats to get stamina back for your running back. You can basically cycle through the plays. Uh, if you cycle through it enough, typically the color of the running back, you can see right here, it's a bright red. He's very tired. Uh, will typically go down a shade, meaning he's a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, energized. So right there, you can see I just basically flip through the plays in a formation. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.